Since you are watching this video, I know you are either very worried about your shrimp, or you are wanting to be prepared for the future in the event of disease in your tanks. In either case, I don't want to waste your time, so let me show you a detailed example of how I treat my shrimp tanks with hydrogen peroxide. I'll get into more detail about this later, but there are some risks involved here, so proceed with caution. About a week ago, this tank had a minor case of rust disease, so I just went through this process recently and wanted to share it. The first thing we need to do is to calculate the volume of water in our tank. This tank is a 20 gallon long, but there is substrate and plants and hardscape, so we can confidently say that there is less than 20 gallons of water in there. Not to mention, this tank hasn't been topped off recently, so there's even more water missing. Firstly, we want to measure from the top of the substrate to the water line. This is the height we will use for our volume calculation. I'm measuring in inches, but you can measure in whatever unit you like, just make sure to input those units into the volume calculation later. Now trust me, it's easy, as complicated as it may seem. The height of my tank from substrate to water level is right around 9 inches. Now, we're going to measure from one end of the tank to the other. Obviously, this will factor in the width of the glass walls, but that is a negligible amount. We will be lowering our final number to account for things like this, and to avoid potentially overdosing our tank. The width of my tank from one side to the other is 30 inches. So now that we have height and length, we're going to measure the depth of our tank from front to back, just like we did for length. The depth of my tank is 12 inches. So with this information we just gathered, we can pretty easily calculate the number of gallons in our tank. I'm using the website linked in the description, but I'm sure there's a thousand ways to get this information. Now that we have the number of gallons we're going to treat, which is on screen for my example, we're going to multiply this number by a value from 0.6 to 0.9. If your tank has a ton of hardscape, plants, and decorations, let's use 0.6. This assumes that roughly 40% of your tank is decor. If the tank is mostly empty, we can use 0.9. This just helps us to err on the side of caution. If you're confused by the values we're using, it's probably best to just use something like 0.7 or 0.75. So if your total gallons are 20, and we multiply it by 0.7, we'll end up with 14. Okay, so now that we have our adjusted number of gallons, we can calculate the necessary dosage. We want to use 1.5 milliliters of 3% hydrogen peroxide per US gallon, which is 3.8 liters. You may have seen 1.5 milliliters per 4.5 liters, but that is imperial gallons and not US gallons. Make sure you're using the correct units based on your region. In my example, we are treating 9.82 gallons, which we will round to 10 gallons for the sake of simplicity, and because we're already erring on the side of caution and are not risking an overdose to our tank. At 1.5 milliliters per US gallon, we will be treating with 15 milliliters at 10 gallons. Here is the process for dosing. I start by filling up a cup with tank water. Then, I add the necessary dose, which in this case is 15 milliliters. Once that is thoroughly mixed, we want to turn our filtration and lighting off for approximately one hour. You can also remove your sponge filter if you like to minimize the chance of hurting your cycle. Now, it's as simple as spreading the peroxide solution all around the tank. We want to spread it out as much as possible. I use an algae scraper to stir the water around to try to cover as much surface area as we possibly can. Now we just have to wait an hour and we can turn our lights and filtration back on. Huge thanks to Mark Shrimp Tanks and Shrimply Explained for their respective resources on this topic, which will both be linked in the description. Now why did I have rust disease in the first place? 
and how can we avoid shrimp diseases in general going forward? I am very confident that this yellow tank was struggling with rust disease due to excess nutrients. I have been pushing the feeding levels to the extreme in this tank, wanting to see what is possible for maximum breeding. I think I went overboard, and despite the crystal clear water, the actual water chemistry wasn't doing very well. Water quality is the single most influential factor, by far, in the presence and proliferation of shrimp disease. If you're dealing with shrimp disease, here's a few things I'd recommend. Once your tank is properly treated, I think it's best that you take a close look at your feeding regimen. How often are you feeding? Are there often leftovers? How often are you testing your water? It could be that you're feeding too much and the water is going bad. You can either feed less or do more frequent water changes. I think in this tank, I'm going to start changing water frequently so that I can continue feeding a large amount. My goal for this yellow tank is to have as many shrimp as possible, so I'd rather change water regularly than reduce feeding. If you look online, there is no shortage of horror stories when it comes to using hydrogen peroxide. It has many applications in the aquarium hobby and requires proper dosing and attention to detail. Failure to pay attention when using it for any application could mean the end of your tank. When estimating using the process in this video, you should be conservative. A little goes a long way, and excess is certainly no good. I can't guarantee the results, as there are many factors involved, but what you saw in this video worked perfectly for me. I didn't see a single shrimp or snail die in this entire tank, and as far as I can tell, the rust disease has been all but eradicated. If you aren't feeling confident, please seek out extra resources, or reach out to me in the comments below. I don't think it's wise to try treating your tank if you aren't comfortable with the instructions shown in this video. Like I said before, it could wipe out every living animal in your tank. Now, some of you may be wondering where salt dips come into play in this process. For some shrimp ailments, salt dips are a crucial component that shouldn't be ignored. For others, treating with hydrogen peroxide is the best course of action. Salt dips are typically used when a shrimp is infected with a parasite. The salt water typically kills off whatever is preying on them while leaving the shrimp relatively unharmed. That goes beyond the scope of this video, but I wanted to mention it for anyone who may be confused and expecting to have to use both methods in the treatment of something like rust disease. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please leave a like if you liked it, and subscribe to see more videos in the future. We are approaching the time of year where I expect I'll be able to upload weekly or occasionally twice a week. If you have any specific things you'd like me to discuss, I'd love to hear it down below in the comments. Thanks again, and happy shrimp keeping!